Told you she was nosy. Hey guys, welcome back. Here we are now with uh, part five of the transfer case build. And this is going to be the final part because this is where we're going to build up the intermediate shaft onto its new bearings <clears throat> and check the uh, preload. Now, because this is the newer type, the TDCI and the TD5 apparently has the same, we've got a, um, a, a spacer in the middle, a, a, a precisely ground spacer or turn spacer of a specific length to give a correct preload. So we can actually do this off the box, basically. We can just put it onto the shaft, pull the bearings down and check the preload. We don't need to actually put it in the transfer case. Um, something I have discovered, uh, a, a new discovery, um, if I take the old nut, having screwed it on here a couple of times, it's extremely tight, the thread, even though I've cleaned the thread up, every time I tighten it, every time I torque it up to like, I don't know, something like 60 pounds feet, I haven't put a torque wrench on it yet, but every time I tighten it up, I can't get it off again, the thread goes really tight. And yet, if you look at the new one, I can just wind it on. Just wind it on, no problem at all. So you would think it would be the soft nut that would be getting damaged when it's torqued up. Do you know, I wonder if maybe some of the issue is in this bloody shaft. Maybe the shaft isn't hard enough for something, because for it to damage a thread on a hardened shaft, you know, a soft nut like this, a steak nut, it's um, quite unbelievable. But anyway, the mystery is this bloody transfer box are getting me down. So um, let's get on with it. The first thing I've done is I've marked the bearings again. We're going to be pressing the outer housings into the gear and then the inners are going to go on and off the shaft. Now I want to make sure that I keep that bearing assembly and that bearing assembly separate. So rather than going front and back I've gone B and S. No it's not bullshit, it's big and small. Big, small. So um, there's no way of getting confused then because I did on the... Which one was it? I think it was the, um, the input, yeah, input shaft. I went front and rear and then quite confused which was front and rear at one point. So um, <clears throat> anyway, in, in the transfer box, that was not on the shaft. So uh, let's get on with it. Okay, so this is the point where you think I've gone absolutely crazy, um, unless you don't think that already. I've put the old bearings back in, okay, because I want to show you how I press them out. Now, if you remember, I said I made this tool now this is basically a piece of aluminium which is 41 mil I think in diameter. Let me just measure it in case you want to make one. It is 45.7. It's 45.7 mil in diameter and then what I've done is flattened down the sides. I think that's 41 across there. It's basically you measure the the minor bore, the smallest bore of the bearing, and mill it down to that, or file it down to that, or whatever, and then file a radius on it. Where am I? File a radius on it so that it goes down through. Then file away these two corners and file away this complete side. I'm going to try and show you here how it works. So basically, what it will do, it will go in like that through that bearing. Okay, and then I need to turn it. So I can turn it like this. And then push it down in and then I can use that then you can see that's down in there and I can push down in there now with a shaft say like that yeah and knock that bearing out so uh, I'll get to the press and press it out okay so we've got the gear here and I've put it on top of this piece of aluminium tube it's always best to press into a tube or something if you can rather than pressing through because then you've got to catch whatever's coming out underneath and if you want to use it again you don't want it falling on the floor so if you can press into something like that then it always helps to um you know it's obviously going to catch the bearing as it falls out so a piece of steel rod here this is quite rusty if this was new bearings i was fitting um or i intend to use these bearings again i would clean it up or wrap it in some tape or something for fear of the uh, rust getting anywhere so that's going to sit on there like that and then that's going to sit on there like that and it all looks a bit precarious as soon as we get some pressure on it it will square up and press there we go like so there we go it's gone so we'll let the ram come up 
go. Take the steel rod out. Lift the gear up. Get the old bearing in the tool. So now we can just drop the tool down in there again. Go all the way up. And of course, because the camera's on, it's being a swine. Okay, I'll get this in and press this bearing out. Well, I did this the first time. It just went really easy. Right, so we've got the housing out now. We've got the, the, the housing, the, the, the outer out. Um, and we've got this all clean now. Make sure you clean inside this bore, um, down inside here, because you do get a lot of crap build up in there. So obviously the two bearings are in and any crap that's in there can't get out so um anything you see on here it's not chips in the teeth it's some um, it's like wax or something it's weird so um <clears throat> anyway there we go so that's all nice and clean now so we'll start to press these bearings in you can see back here if you can see back here i've got the old bearings i've got the old shaft the old nut and i've got the old spacer now the only thing i'm going to reuse is the spacer so we've got the new shaft here from Ashcroft's, £28. Um, <clears throat> as you can see, it's black. It's probably nitrided, which is why it's got this black colour. It comes covered in this, you can see on there. You can see this some there. It comes covered in this red grease. Um, so we have to get that off with some brake cleaner or paraffin or whatever. <clears throat> and I need to um, do a better job of cleaning this one up. So I'm not really sure I need to use the new shaft to pull, the, pull it all down. But I think I might because of this, this dodgy thread on this one. So we've got the new shaft there, sleeve goes over lovely, we've got the new nut which threads on lovely. Might as well keep the shaft in its packet. Now this old stuff, don't ever throw it away, it's always worth keeping because you never know, you might want to make a sheet metal roller or something like that and that would be absolutely perfect. Uh, you've got the shaft, you've got the two bearings there, you could knock up some sort of space or just use the old crush sleeve and tighten the nut up. And, um, and, and basically you've got a pair of tinker bearings, job done. So um. I did I was press these bearings in now you know as you remember I said I marked these big and small so big small this is the small end so I'm going to press that one in first so we get the bearing out of its packet again we'll take the outer out put the inner straight back in its bag don't put it down anywhere put that back in its box safely and that's then marked small so we know that's the one that's going to go in at this end so I can this has already got some lubrication on it so I don't need to lubricate it particularly so press that in like that just press that in square and then get it over on the press and press it in okay so we've got the bearing in there now sorry about lighting guys this is a bit for some reason the lighting's a bit rubbish today I don't know why um, anyway so there's the outer bearing this famous alley plate that's been used, I think, on every single bearing fit I've done. Put that on there like that. Just get it centred up. And press it in. Okay, so that's as far as we can go with that. Now basically, that bearing is about 2 inch OD, so I've got a piece of 2 inch aluminium. So I'm going to put that on like that. Stick that old brake cap I can use that piece of aluminium I expect. Yeah. Go press that in. turns on it, make sure it's down and then release. One thing I note of health, one thing I note of health, a note of health and safety, when you notice a press bearings out on this thing because it's a cheap piece of Clark junk, when you press it you'll notice the bearing always goes bang at the end and that's not the bearing banging out that's because it's all cheap and flexible and it sort of flexes and then as the bearing let go it all flexes back so beware of that because it will it will pinch you if you're not careful so be wary of that. So uh, I'll turn it over and do the other side and then I'll come back. Okay, so get this all bearing out of the way. 
What I've done now, I've got myself three bits of five thou shim. I've cut those so I know they're five thou. So what I've got to do now is put this together with some shim in it and then see how much envelope we've got, just like you saw me do before. So initially I'm going to use, I'll, I'll use the new shaft actually because of that horrible thread. So I will use the new shaft. So I'm going to get the, the small bearing, here's the small bearing, and I'm going to drop this one on the shaft, probably for the last time. Take it out of the bag, put it on the shaft. Actually before I do that, I'm going to just give the shaft a quick wipe just to make sure it hasn't picked up anything. I must say this is that is beautiful fit, that's absolutely stunning. So that sits down on that end face like so. Okay, so we can drop that on like that. So now I've got to get these bits of 5,000 shim and put them in there. Now they are actually touching the cage, but I'm not going to worry about that because they'll just flex out of the way and it won't affect the, the reading once everything is torqued up. Okay, so there's my three bits of 5,000 shim. I'm just going to check this is all clean. Drop that onto there and make sure the shim stays in place and it does. Drop the gear on like so. Take our big end bearing as it were. Drop that in. So now I've got some aluminium spacers here, which will just take up these are actually some spacers I made for a Skyline GTR gearbox mount. I've got one more there. I need something else as well. So let me turn the camera off. I need to go and find another spacer to get in there. Right, I was walking around for ages then thinking, how on earth did I do this before? And of course I've got the, the what I call the dummy. So um so that's it now, I've got a thin aluminium spacer, the three thicker ones, and that like that. So that's all done up now. It's not torqued up or anything, it is done up quite tight, as tight as I could do it like that. But it's enough just to take all the, um, the end flow out. And if I want to really make sure that it is tight, I could, what I could do is get something like an aluminium block or something like this that I used before. Something taller. use on the press all the time something like that and what I could do is just go on there like that and just pull it down a bit tighter just to make sure so now we've got that on there we can hear that we've got some end flow and here as I'm as I knock it so we know we've got some end flow what we're looking for here is around three thou now if it's more than three thou then that means I'll end up with not enough preload if it's less than three thou I'll end up with too much preload and I haven't checked this so what I want to do now is just make sure that I've got the I've got the right amount of preload um, three thou and if it's too much or too little I either need to get a new spacer or machine this one down so let's have a look at what we've got so I'll put this on the gear And I know you can't really see what I'm doing, but in a minute you'll be able to because I'll move the camera so you can. Right. After 10 minutes of camera positioning, hopefully now you can see what we're doing. So I'll get the clock zeroed. There we go, the clock's on zero now. So if I push down on there and lift the gear, you can see we've actually got nine thou of backlash so that means if i take the five thou of shim out i should have four thou of backlash okay so i've taken my shim out here it is here see it there so there's the three bits of five thou shim so i'll turn this over the only reason i turn it over is because we've got a bigger bigger step here to get the clock into and also we've got a flat face on this end rather than the the end of the thread so We'll zero the clock again. So now we should have 
fourth out of backlash. But with it up here, we've got none, which is a bit strange. That is very strange. You saw we had nine thou. I've taken the five thou out, and now we've got none. Now I can tell. I can tell I've got no preload on there because it spins so easily. So it's probably something like. It's probably dead right. So let me just try this again with the five thou shim and see what happens. Okay, so I think I had a combination of the shim was too thick. And when I cut it, it was forming a burr, so it had an edge on it. So it sort of, although I thought the five thou shim must have been slightly thicker with the burred edge. And also, if you remember, it was just on the edge of the cage. I think that may have caused the problem. I don't know. I can't see that it would. So what I've done, I've got some three thou shim, an old three thou feeder. And I've cut some pieces like this, which are much thinner. And they go down in there. I hope you can see that there. Yes, you can. A little piece like that, much thinner. Um, so it doesn't touch the, uh, the outer of the, the bearing cage. And I've clamped it all up. And this time I put the actual uh, pin in the vise, clamped it up in, in soft jaws and uh, clamped it up. And now I've actually got like a lazy sort of, it's just about a thou I've got there now. Because it spins on there easily, which basically means with three thou in there, if I take the three thou out, I will get two thou of preload. So it's absolutely spot on. So this actually proves to me that the whole issue with this job was A, this ridiculously tight thread on the end of the shaft and the fact that they mangled the shaft into the, into the locking tab, which I call the dummy. Um, so that for me is it. So when I actually put this on now, with it all clamped and torqued up, that will be absolutely fine. So um, there we go. Thanks for watching this guys, like I say, get these bearings, the old ones, put them in the bags, put them back in the boxes, they're obviously not new, but you can always mark on the box you can mark used if you want to, and then um, you've got them for, for a rainy day, and uh, I mean like if anybody ever wanted to have me build an LT234 as cheaply as I possibly could, those bearings would go again, no problem. I'm just replacing them here because they're like, I think they're nine or 10 pounds each. I wanted a new shaft anyway. What's the point in putting old bearings on a new shaft? So that's the only reason I've changed them. So I mean, and for somebody who's not as fussy as me, I think this shaft would be fine. Although having said that, that thread is dodgy. There's definitely something wrong with that bloody thread. Because this one, I can do this nut up time and time again, and it's absolutely fine. If I tighten this nut up on there once, it'll go funny and it'll start to damage the thread in the nut. So there's definitely something up with that thread. So anyway, um, thanks for watching guys, that's it. We're over. Next is gonna be part six, which is gonna be actually properly building it. So we'll be looking at putting together the um, high-low selector housing. We're gonna put the diff lock selector housing together. We'll put all the selectors in with all the detent balls. We'll use all our silicons and sealants and God knows what. And, have a whale of a time. So um, I'll see you all for part six. I don't know when that's going to be because at the moment I'm going to take advantage of the warmer weather. It's been windy as hell today, which I haven't been able to do any painting. But um, hopefully tomorrow the wind is going to drop, but the warmer weather is staying with us temporarily. So I'm going to get some bits and pieces all painted up, hopefully. What I'm looking forward to is a decent long dry spell where I can get the chassis done. So um, I'll see you all soon for part six, guys. Thanks for watching. Happy Land Rovering. And as Mike says, let's make Land Rovers better. <laughs>